So after all of you guys have voted on my Instagram story about which is going to be my next review, the Rika Raid or the Tentacle Sync Track E system, all of you chose the Raider Raid. So in this video, I will talk about this one. And if you want to join in on future polls, just make sure to follow me on Instagram. I already made a couple of videos about my storage solutions in 2020 and that has recently changed. The old workflow that I had where I was working off of external SSDs just wasn't viable anymore and I just needed more space and I also needed something that is really really fast. So I came up with a new solution and that is almost perfect for me. So in today's video we are talking about the Arica 8050 TU3-6 M RAID Array and that is a 6 bay RAID Array that you can configure with up to to six 2.5 inch SSDs or spinning hard drives. And in my case, I used SSDs because that gives you the option of a really large and amazingly fast basically external SSD drives. It does have some drawbacks, but overall I will give you the rundown of why I use this machine, how I use it and what it can do and if that is the right tool for you. More on that after the intro. My name is Damien Cooper and welcome to Monkey Pixels. So the way I have my Eureka configured is with six four terabyte SSD drives. And that gives me a total of 20 terabyte of usable space in a RAID 5 configuration. And that kind of begs the question, what do I need 20 terabytes of fast storage for? I talked about this in several YouTube videos when I was talking about storage and the reason I need a really big and fast storage solution is this YouTube channel. Basically in almost every YouTube video I talk about previous jobs that we had and projects and where I used that gear. So I always need all of my files and all the YouTube videos accessibly to me really quickly. If I had all my footage on different kind of hard drives it would be a nightmare to look for that specific shot that I need for my current YouTube video. And as you know, when you're following this channel for a while, a lot of my YouTube videos have a lot of B-roll overlaid from different projects, different YouTube videos or commercial works. So overall, this is just a question about workflow. And that doesn't only go for YouTube alone. I also have a couple of clients where I do continuous work for over and over. And I just recently wrapped up a commercial where I also used shots from two other videos that I shot earlier for the same client. And having this on one centralized storage solution is absolutely key to a really fast workflow. Another really big reason is portability. Although I haven't really been traveling a lot in 2020, I hope to do so in the near future. And sometimes I'm abroad for up to three months at a time. So having all of my footage in one place that I can just take with me on a plane is absolutely amazing. So now that we've established why I need so much space, why do I need it to be so fast? Usually I shoot on a Canon C300 Mark III in RAW and this is for this YouTube channel as well as for all of our client work. And a lot of our work revolves about multicam sequences, two angle interviews or even music videos with up to eight angles at a time. But even for these YouTube videos there's usually one layer of talking head and at least one layer of b-roll. And for this alone I need a hard drive that is really fast. And since the Eureka rate is actually everything that I'm looking for in theory, let's actually look at it in detail and start with the body and the design of the thing. The entire device is actually smaller than I thought it would be and it's also pretty light when stacked up with six SSD drives. On the front you have your six space where you can easily install your SSDs in and underneath you have an LCD screen that shows you when something is going on within the RAID and when there's nothing going on it just shows you its current IP address. Right next to it you also have a couple of buttons where you can theoretically install and change your RAID system configuration without having to connect it to a computer but I would probably advise against that and you will probably never use these buttons anyway. On the back of the device you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports and they are classified for speeds up to 40 gigabytes per second so that is plenty of speed for everything you can imagine. And here's a disclaimer, the two Thunderbolt 3 ports are not there to connect multiple computers to your Eureka RAID so you can simultaneously access your footage. Those are only there for daisy chaining, meaning that you don't lose a port on your computer when hooking it up to it. With the one port you connect it to your computer and with the other port you can connect another external hard drive, a monitor, a mouse or a card reader to it so you don't lose a port basically. Another port we have on the back side is the one gigabit ethernet port and here we have the same disclaimer. You can't access your footage over the network and the only thing you can do is set it up or make changes to it. 
We also have an expansion port and that basically means that there are separate expansion units for a Rika rate system. So when you run out of storage and you want to add more storage to it, you can actually get an expansion unit, hook it up to your existing Rika rate and therefore expand the storage that your original Rika rate had. You also obviously have your typical DC in port, but with the 6M you actually have an additional port and that is a 4 pin XLR port. And with this 4-pin XLR input, you can actually hook it up to a mobile power solution. And with this, you can take it on set or in case of a power outage, the RAID actually keeps running. And lastly, we have a display port. So if you want to hook up an external monitor to your computer, the device kind of acts as a hub. So you can actually use a display port and don't have to use a display port on your computer, which is kind of handy if you have a laptop, for example, and you want to hook it up to it and then just have an external monitor as well. Another really cool thing about the design is that you actually have a top handle that you can attach to the body and then it's easier to carry on set. I chose to leave it off because that way it actually fits into my camera backpack when flying or when traveling and with the top handle it doesn't really fit into any of my bags or a pelican case. Next up let's talk about the setup process. If you use the right cable the setup process is actually pretty straightforward. You hook it up to your computer via Thunderbolt then you go to the Eureka website, download the M-Rate software tool and you double click on it and then it establishes a connection between your computer and the RAID system and here you have multiple options but for me I just chose the easiest one and just clicked on quick create. When I first got my RAID system I only had four SSDs and that is one specialty of Eureka RAID systems because you can actually choose to have them delivered to you without any pre-installed drives at all. And that gives you total freedom over which kind of hard drives you want to install and also how many. Since I only had four drives, I chose a RAID 0 configuration. And that basically means that all of my four 4 terabyte hard drives were combined into one big 16 terabyte drive that is also blazing fast, but I will talk about this in a minute. So here I only had four drives installed, actually clicked on the RAID 0 configuration and it really only took a couple of hours, maybe one or two hours, and then everything was initialized and the entire thing was up and running. About two weeks later, I had two more hard drives delivered to me. And here I actually wanted to find out if I could now take those two, insert them afterwards, and then actually expand my storage without losing any data or having to reformat my drives. So I just put in two more drives, I restarted the RAID, and now I have no idea what happened. So let's actually see. So it just mounted perfectly. So when I go to get info, I have still 16 terabytes of storage, so nothing changed so far. So let's go into the RAID system software and see what shows up over there. So pulling that up, we see that we have actually six slots populated. So now we have two free of usage and they're not into the RAID configuration. So now I need to figure out how to actually merge all of this together without losing all my data on it. All right, so there's an option to expand RAID set. And I don't know if that is what we're looking for, but I will actually just click on it and see what happens. So now I have the two slots of the missing four terabyte drives. So I will just actually click on those, confirm the operation, submit. And now I can actually choose between RAID 0, RAID 3, RAID 5 and RAID 6. So I'll put it in RAID 5. And now it's actually asking me if I want to change the volume attribute during RAID expansion. And I guess that's what I do, so... Are you sure? I am not sure, but we'll see. Let's say yes. RAID set expansion started. So now... We'll wait, I guess. The tricky part here was that I started with a RAID 0, but now I decided with 6 drives in it, I actually wanted to have a RAID 5 configuration. Because in a RAID 0, when one of my hard drives dies, everything is gone. But in a RAID 5 configuration, when inserting 6 drives, I can only use 5 drives to actually work off, and the last drive is kind of a spare drive. That's a little bit simplified, but that's basically how it works. And that took about 24 hours total to actually complete. So after those 24 hours, I still only had 16 terabytes left, but I found this modify RAID system tab within the software, and that actually let me expand 
expand my current 16 terabytes to the full 20 terabytes. But still in my finder, I was only displayed 16 terabytes of usable space, so I could only use that. But when going into macOS's disk utility, it actually showed me that I did have the full 20 terabyte available. I just needed to expand my volume. Unfortunately, for some reason that didn't work. So after a little bit of research online, I found a terminal command that basically did the exact same thing that the disk utility program should have been able to, but wasn't. And now everything totally worked. So now I had the full 20 terabytes in RAID 5 configuration. And that is really good to know because now you can actually start small in RAID 0 configuration and then gradually add drives and even switch to a different RAID configuration without having to lose any of your data. So now let's finally talk about the performance of the Eureka 8050TQ36M because with SSD drives in a RAID 0 configuration that should be fairly fast. And fast it was. With four drives in RAID 0 configuration I got a write speed of around 1800 with read speeds of well over 2000 megabytes per second. I think it was 2300 megabytes per second. So this was really really fast and is basically fast enough for everything that I do. So now comes the part where I talk about how after putting in six drives it was supposed to be faster but in my initial tests it wasn't and I thought that was because of the RAID 5 configuration and now I'm actually trying to screen capture the speed of the drives and it is faster. It is way faster. So now I had to re-record this and their speeds are a little bit faster on the right side, but they are tremendously faster on the read speeds. And now I'm getting around 2800 megabytes per second. So that is a lot faster than in the RAID 0 configuration with only four drives. One big reason for me to get an SSD rate instead of an HDD rate was the noise because I'm really sensible to any kind of noise in my work environment. I don't like fans, I don't like spinning parts and with an SSD rate that actually should come in handy because A, SSDs don't get as hot as HDDs so the included fan doesn't have to spin up as much and secondly there's no moving parts, no spinning discs and that definitely makes a huge difference when it comes to the noise overall. And the Rika rate system is actually fairly quiet and if I'm saying that that actually means a lot because as I've said I'm really sensible to that. Yes you can hear the fan and it's constantly spinning but it's actually really not that bad. It spins at around 1100 rounds per minute and you can definitely hear it but it's really not that bad. If you really listen closely there sometimes is a little bit of a high-pitched fan noise but again it's really not that bad and coming from me that means a lot. Another really big reason why I chose an SSD rate instead of an HDD rate is portability. When traveling, the HDD rate is way more vulnerable to shocks and vibrations than an SSD rate is. So overall, you can way easier and safer travel with an SSD rate and it's also a lot lighter too. So what's my overall verdict of the Eureka rate after using it for a couple of weeks? I actually think it's almost perfect for what I'm needing it for. It's quiet enough so it can sit on my desk at all times without really being annoying and I can edit off it with absolutely no problems because it's absolutely fast enough. It also maxes out my card reader for my CF Express card so I get the maximum write speed when transferring footage from my C300 or my Canon EOS R5 to my RAID system. With the RAID 5 configuration, I also have a little bit of redundancy, so when traveling, I don't need to stress about making constant backups at all time, and I'm good with just making one backup a week, which I usually do right now. 20 terabytes is also plenty of space for me, and as of right now, I think I have about 8 terabytes free on this, and that is basically one complete year of all the work that I've done for YouTube and most of my client work. And whenever I run out of this space, I just put it onto another backup archive Raid array that I will be talking about next week but for me 20 terabytes is really plenty and it gives me a lot of headroom for all of my footage. There's also two things that I don't really like about the Eureka Raid. Number one is that I am required to have external power so I can't just use it in a coffee shop with my laptop or add it on a plane but obviously that is a drawback that you have to take if you're using a six bay Raid array. And the second thing I don't really like about it is that there is no power down button or even an on or off switch. So whenever you want to shut this thing down, you need to eject it from your computer and then you basically have to yank out either the power cord or the Thunderbolt cable 
cool and that always feels a little weird to me and I much rather have like a shutdown button where it just powers down. So this was my review of the Eureka 8050 TU3-6M Thunderbolt Raid Array. And if you found this video helpful, please give this video a thumbs up because it helps my channel grow, subscribe to see more content and also enable the notification bell because then you'll see when I upload the video about the next Arika Raid Array and I hope to see you on the next one. Thank you.